What up, what up, Winbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys how we can make something like this. Now this is gonna be a crazy tutorial. I hope you're ready for it. And before we get started in the tutorial, I wanna give a big shout out to Puget Systems for sponsoring this video. Without you guys and this crazy system that you guys had built for me, I don't even think this tutorial would be possible. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. And so to get started, I'm using a brand new Blender 3.5 that just released the other day. And so down here, I'm actually gonna come down here to where it says new file. I think we're gonna start off with general. And then we're gonna take the Blender Cube right here, just as we have it, we're not gonna delete it or anything. We're just gonna come up here to File. We're gonna come down here to Export. So right here, we have FBX, and we're just gonna export it. So I'm gonna click on this. And then over here, I'm gonna look for my desktop. I'm gonna look for my folder right here, yep. And I'm just gonna export this untitled.fbx. I'm gonna hit Export, leave everything else as is. And there we go. So for the next part, we're actually gonna take this in the Cinema 4D, the version I just released the other day as well, and we're gonna take it one step further. And once you have Cinema 4D opened up, I'm gonna actually come up here and I'm just gonna reset my layout. So I'm gonna click on standard like so. And it's gonna bring me back to this layout that I like. And I'm actually gonna bring in my Windows Explorer where I have my FBX that I brought in from Blender. I'm just gonna left click and drag it into my scene. I'm gonna have my import settings right here. I'm just gonna leave everything as is. And I'm gonna click okay. And now I have a bunch of stuff in here in which I could probably delete this light out right here. And then this camera, I'm gonna delete this one out because I'm gonna use the official Cinema 4D camera, which is right here. So I'm gonna click on this. And now you can see that we're actually looking through our camera, but I'm gonna line this up. So I'm gonna come down here, the coordinates, and right here where we have our X, Y, and Z, I'm gonna zero these out. So I'm gonna hit zero, tab zero, tab zero. Same thing for the rotation. And now we have our camera in exact zero. So if I look through my camera like so, now we have our cube inside of our scene. So let me actually eject back out of my camera because I'm gonna come up here to MoGraph and I'm gonna bring it into a cloner. So I'm gonna take my cube right here. I'm gonna drop it into a cloner like so. And then if I come down here to object, instead of grid, let's actually do a honeycomb. Honeycombs are cool, right? And now we have a bunch of small cubes in here inside of a honeycomb. And actually, I'm going to delete this cube right here and come back over here. And I'm going to drop another cube in right here. And now I'm going to bring that into my cloner. And cool. Now we have a honeycomb wall with all these different cubes here. I'm actually going to come down here. Let's add a material to it. So I'm going to double click right here. Delete this material. Name this new material. Yep, like so. And I'm going to bring that onto my cube just like that. And I think we're good to go. So from here, we're gonna get everything prepped up so we can actually bring it into Unreal Engine. So what I'm gonna do is hit Control D on my keyboard. I'm gonna hit Cineware, and right here, save Polygon Cache. I'm gonna click that. Save Animation Cache, I'm gonna click that as well. And I don't have any materials on here. I'm gonna actually bring in some Mega Scans from Unreal Engine. So I'm not gonna click this on, but down here, I'm probably just gonna make this one times eight. So we're gonna bring in 8K textures, I'm gonna make them 16-bit in a PNG format. So now what I'm gonna do is come over here to File, and I'm just gonna save my Cinema 4D project like so. So now that we did everything inside of Cinema 4D, now it's time to bring it over to Unreal Engine so we can take full advantage of all the real-time capabilities over there. And now with the Epic Games Launcher opened up, I'm inside of my library, as you can see right here, I'm actually gonna use the brand new Unreal Engine 5.2. It just came out in preview. And so I'm gonna click Launch right here to open this up. And once we do, we have the Unreal Project Browser, and I'm gonna click blank right here. And then I'm just gonna save this to my desktop for my project down here. Just gonna name this one, yep. I'm gonna make sure I have ray tracing turned on, very important. And then down here, it says, you cannot have the same. Okay, yeah, so I'm just gonna name this Yup2. I'm gonna hit Create. Now make sure you pay close attention to these next steps because these are vital to be able to bring your Cinema 4D project into Unreal Engine 5.2. So now with everything opened up, what I'm gonna do is come down here. I'm gonna update project file like so, then manage my plugins. And up here, I'm gonna type in C4D. And I'm gonna make sure that I bring in the Datasmith C4D importer. And I'm gonna click this on and it's gonna ask us to reset, which is only gonna take a few moments here. And then once everything is reset, we can actually exit this window out. And then right here, where we have this little cube box, we're gonna come down here, the Datasmith. We're gonna do file import. And then I'm gonna look for where I have my Cinema 4D file, which is right here. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna click open. And I'm just gonna leave it inside of my content folder. I'm gonna click okay. 
And then I'm going to leave everything else as is here. And I'm going to click import. And there we go. So it's going to take a few moments to compile the shaders and everything. But once it's done, now you can see that we actually have a Cinema 4D project here inside of Unreal Engine, which is crazy, right? Like we have our honeycomb here. I can actually delete that right there because we don't need it. And now you can see we have our camera right there. So let's actually get our camera properly aligned so that we can render everything out. So I think what I'm going to do is actually let's take it and let's make a sequencer so we can animate this all the way through. So maybe we're going to start right here. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to add level sequence and I'm just going to name this one. Yep. Like so. And now down here, let me actually pull this over so we can see it. I'm going to look for my camera in which I could come up here into the search, type in camera, left click, drag down there. And now we're actually looking through our camera. So in order to keyframe my camera, what I'm going to do is come down here to transform. I'm just going to put keyframes on everything and then I'm going to bring it all the way to the end. Let's say we want to do like a thousand frames, right? Like we're just going to go crazy. It's all real time. It doesn't even matter. Bring it over to a thousand frames, have our endpoint go all the way over to the end. And now let's animate our camera going through. So we want to make sure we have this clicked on so that we can make sure that we're going to get automatic keyframes. And I'm actually going to eject myself from the camera, click on my camera, and now let's animate this. So I'm just going to drag it back. Let's do a nice sleek camera move, something like that. I mean, that looks cinematic, like something that you would see at like the beginning of like a movie open or something like that. I worked on many movie titles. Speaking of which, instead of 30 frames per second, Let's come down here, make it 24 frames per second. So it's a little bit more cinematic there. And I think that's going to be suffice. So let's actually come through, look through our camera, and let's see the masterpiece that we just made. So we're slowly coming through our cubes here. Everything is looking really, really nice. I'm really liking how this is like slow and dramatic and it's really building up that intensity that we we come to enjoy when we watch these type of cinematic opens. So I'm not going to watch the entire thing because I don't want to spoil it. So let's actually just render this out to take advantage of the real time capabilities in Unreal Engine 5.2. So what I'm going to do, make sure I come down here to save, come right here to the clipboard and then right here under settings, I'm going to click on this. And instead of a JPEG sequence, let's actually delete that. And we're going to go Apple ProRes because this is 2023. We're going to go crazy with it, right? So we're going to do Apple ProRes 444XQ because we need all the Qs and 4s that we could get. Come down here to Output. Let me see. I'm going to come down here to Desktop. I'm just going to save it into my Yup folder. And I'm going to make actually a new folder here. So I'm going to name this one Pre-Renders because we're going to bring it into After Effects after this select folder sequence name just going to leave it sequence name and then let's see what we're going to do next i think we're going to just leave it as is like so so i'm going to come down here to accept come down here to render local and after it's done compiling on the shaders and everything let's just wait and see how fast this renders out for us Man, this is going extremely fast. Like, look how fast that's going. Like, I didn't even go through and do any depth of field or anything. No motion blur, none of that stuff. I left it all at default because we're crazy like that. And this is looking really good. Like, I mean, I'm showing you guys how we could do movie quality stuff all inside this tutorial. So, I mean, this is crazy right here. Like, we're almost done. We're almost at 900. You can see that took less than a minute to render out. So from here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring this into After Effects and we're going to dolly it up, maybe add some magic bullet looks and some stuff to it and really get this thing ready to show. So now we're in the latest and greatest version of After Effects. So what I'm going to do is come over here to where we have our project right here. I'm going to click in the blank space. I'm going to hit control on my keyboard, hit I, and this is going to be where we can import our files. So I'm just going to click on this. I'm going to import it. And now let's click and drag it into our timeline down here. Let's drag this over so we can see it a little bit better. So let me drag this all the way over like so. There we go. Now we're just going to play this through. Now you see that we have a nice 30 second long movie clip right here. Everything looks nice. It looks cinematic. So let's actually come over here to our effects and presets. I'm going to type in looks because we're going to add some magic bullet looks to this. So I'm just going to click and drag it into my effects panel and then I'm going to click edit. 
Then I'm going to come over here to looks and let's find something. Oh, this one looks really cinematic right here. Color Splode. Really digging this one right here. So I'm going to add this one like so. Then I'm going to come over here to effects and presets. And I'm actually going to add some levels to it. I like using levels over curves. Let's bring this all the way down somewhere like right there. That's looking great right there. So let's play this through. There we go. So that's going to be what the end result looks like. So once we're happy with this, we're actually going to only render this whole sequence out with one frame. So I'm going to click on this, come up here to composition, save frame as, and right here inside of my desktop folder, I think I'm just going to name this one final render like so. Oh, I hit the plus button on accident, but I mean, that's actually a good title. So we have final render plus, I'm going to click save. This is going to bring up a render queue. So current settings, I want best settings. I'm going to do a PNG and this is going to be my title right here. I'm going to click on render. And we're going to give us a few minutes to render out because this is so intensive that it's going to take a few. So I'm actually going to cut the video and then we're going to show our final render here. And once everything is done, this is going to be our final render right here. And so this is the end result that we're looking for. Like if you wanted to take it one step further, you could bring it into Photoshop, add some curves, some levels, do some compositing to really freshen this up. But what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to show you guys how we can make this interactive inside of Fortnite. So if you're ready for the next step and making this a little bit more tangible, let's get right into it. So I have the brand new Fortnite creative opened up right here. What I'm going to do is actually come over here to where it says blank. And I'm actually just going to turn this one on. And then I'm going to come down here to where it says my projects. I'm just going to name this one. Yup. Three. And then let me proceed by clicking create down here in the lower right hand corner. And so now we're inside of Fortnite creative. So what I'm going to do is right down here in my content browser, I'm actually going to click and drag my file into here. So let me click and drag it down here. Now we have this texture down here and actually let's make this into a material. So I'm going to right click down here, come to material. And I'm just going to name this one. Yup. Four. Double click on this and now we have this material here in which I'm actually going to minimize this a little bit so I can actually click and drag this into this like so. So now we have our image file in which we're just going to make it onto a base material like so. And then I'm actually going to hold one on my keyboard left click and I'm going to bring my roughness and my specular all the way down. So I'm just going to connect these like so and I'm going to have my value as zero. And now we have the true form of our masterpiece that we've just rendered out. So I'm just going to click save like so. And now I'm going to exit that out. And then over here, I'm actually going to let me exit this out. So we get a little bit more viewport here. I'm going to come right here, left click. I'm going to come down here to shapes and let's put this on a plane, right? Because this is what our masterpiece is going to be on our canvas here. So I'm going to bring this up. Let's actually rotate this down a little bit like so. And actually, let's make this there we go we're going to elongate it a little bit like that then i'm going to come down here to my material drag and drop it onto here and now we have our masterpiece right here inside of fortnite so the next step from here let's actually play this i actually have my trusty xbox controller right here so you can see everything is live it's inside the demo it's all real time let's bring this into fortnite so now we have fortnite fully functional right here on our system again i'm going to be using the xbox controller for this demonstration so let's get right into it i have my player moving around i just spawned in here and now we have our own gallery like this is our own art gallery it disappears from behind but boom when we come in the front i mean this is the magic of it this is how it's interactive right like now we don't see it someone's like david copperfield right now we do so this is david blaine in the flesh right here magic tricks showed you guys how to do it here first but now we have our masterpiece fully functional inside of Fortnite Creative. It doesn't get any crazier than that. So if you want to take it one step further, let everybody know that your boy Wimbush showed you guys how to do that. So hopefully this helped you guys out so you can make masterpieces just like this. If it did, make sure you leave me a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and happy April Fools. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.